Hey everybody, it's John here. Welcome back inside the toy room. Today we've got the Empire Strikes Back Slave 1 Vintage Collection from Kenner. So we're going to unbox and put this together. I'm going to show you all the steps and how to put this thing together. And uh, then do a quick look at the vehicle itself. I'm going to try not to go over a half hour with this video, but I think it's going to be a long one. So... The box here shows all the features on the top. Great window on the back there. Figures, three figures fit in. There's a place for the Carbonite Han to slide into behind the guys, which is different than we saw in the movie, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Side of the box has a button there for the bombs, probably, yep. <clears throat> And the front has the Vintage Collection logo there. This is ages four and up. Kenner Hasbro. Hasbro Kenner, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Boba Fett's Slave One. Yeah. Really nice packaging. I like the box a lot. This is a really cool box, of course. Let's see the barcode here for those who want it. Let me spin it around for you guys. Barcode here for those of you guys you those of you who want it. And we got the more features, missile launching and wings turning, things like that. All right, let's get into this thing. So, I'm going to open it from this side over here. And we'll just try to slide the bat the box out as best we can and sort of give you a look at how it comes when you first pull it right out of the box here. We're gonna have to lift it up and sort of dump it out in a sense. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, it's stuck on something here. Stuck on itself. So there it is, straight out of the packaging, just like that. Bits and bobbles shoved in the sides and on the bottom, and the main shell just takes up the bulk of the packaging here. Wings, bombs, guns, yeah, carbonite block, guns, missiles, things like that. And then we have more stuff down there. Let's get these out. Take out these side pieces. Pull the big shell out. The main shell, we'll set that over there. And we got one more bag, two more bags. The canopy, window glass and canopy part. And the stand with a couple more bits and baubles in there. All right. So got all the cardboard here, get that out of the way, and we'll take a look at the main shell here. So it's got this door that opens up, that's the first thing I notice when I look at it. This interior here, if we can get the light right. There we go. Got the light right. <laughs> so I uh, had to adjust some things there to get the light up closer. So there's pegs there so you can stand guys inside of it. And then we have the front, well, I guess the lower nose the cargo area. Three figures can fit in the back there. In the cockpit area, I mean. Right now, mine doesn't move, so it's got to do. Got to have something to do with the wings, probably, to make it move. We'll figure that out. Yeah, doesn't want to move right yet. So it's locked into position when you first get the vehicle before you put it together. Looks like. Nice paint job. I mean, the, the thing looks good all the way around, really. 
as far as the paint job and sculpting goes. It's massive. This thing is huge. The front slides down. There's a little walkway going to nowhere. So that's interesting. It's just to give you the illusion of being able to set it up like they had in Empire Strikes Back on Bespin there when Cloud City when he was loading up Han. It's all to give you the illusion of being able to have that scene in action. You really got to clip these doors and everything in to get it to line up and look right. I'm going to adjust the camera here in a minute, I think, because I'm not sure I like this angle. We'll get this bag open. Come on. And put the canopy on. We got some instructions in here. And we have, looks like a sticker sheet with six stickers on it. I don't think I'm going to put the stickers on. I'll leave that aside and keep it mint and complete. You know, <laughs> it doesn't need those stickers, I don't think. It looks good on its own. So this is going to clip in here. Doesn't really clip in all that easy, at least for me. Hold on a second here, let me... Why am I having a hard time clipping this in? Come on. It seems wider than... The area it's got to clip into. How, how do we... Why am I not... Why am I not getting this? <laughs> uh, alright, alright. Here we go. It's all clipped in now. <laughs> I had to, like, look at it for a second and be like, why, like, really up close? And then there's two clips down here on the bottom, on the left and right sides. That you got to get in these little clips here and here to have it shut all the way. Because if you don't clip those in, it's a little off. It'll it'll just like shut while wonky and off to the side. And it doesn't line up. So you want to make sure you clip those in to have it line up. Because it, otherwise it'll just be off. It'll look weird. Now it looks flush and all lined up. Yeah. All right, cool. Next bag, uh, we'll do the stand and this little thing, whatever this thing is. Here's the stand. Really bulky stand. This thing is hefty. It's got the Mandalorian monster symbol thing on the bottom whatever boba fett's something monster a sore <laughs> i don't remember what that thing was called but yeah something monster sore <laughs> uh, you got this little chamber the, the the lid and the bottom kind of clip together and you can put a guy in there and he can be like the bounty you know you can call it a a stasis chamber I don't know what you want to call it you know so here's the instructions that come with it and they just show you putting all the parts on the guns the wings and the canopy and then the six different stickers and where they go and like I said they're a little trivial because the paint job on this is done so well I'm not sure you need those stickers put on so I'm gonna leave them off the guns the bombs the way that the hatch works in the front and everything. The way the wings work with the cockpit and all that stuff. Nice, pretty clear and nice instructions. Nothing's, nothing's, you know, obscure in that one. I like it when they have good instructions. The hatch opens in the front here, in the nose. And you can slide this container up inside and pop it back shut and now you've got the stasis container right up there in the nose cargo hold area 
And that nose cargo hold area can also be used for the carbonite block, which we'll get out in this little bag here. So you have two different choices as to where you're going to put that carbonite block on this vehicle, depending on your preference. If you want it to be like, you know, I would say practical, or if you want it to be like the films, like the movies were. So you have two different ways. Here's the wings. This part on the wings move, and nothing else seems to move. There's plastic and rubber here on the wings. Yeah, nothing else seems to move. They are screwed together, so they're locked together really tight. There's missiles for the guns, the nose guns. Bombs for the back. These are those big bombs that go boom. They were really cool. Devastating in Star Wars Battlefront 2. The uh, Han and Carbonite, the block itself. Like I said, I'll show the two different spots where you can put this. This is a really nice Carbonite block. I like the way it looks. And the two guns that go on the nose, the nose gun cannons. Pretty neat looking thing. And these are going to go on here like that. I think they do go this way, yeah. Yeah, you want to make sure this little bump on a gun is on the top. It goes up towards the front of the ship. And clip them in here. There they go. They can swivel around. So make sure that bump is towards the front of the vehicle. And then you can get that way you'll, you, you'll get it correctly on each side there. And then they just kind of click into position. Now I would have preferred if both guns moved together, but eh, it's all right, either way. Cause that's kind of how we see them move in the movie. They both are synced with each other. They don't move, they don't seem to move separately. And now the, the wings, we'll put them on. Make sure you get them in the right arrangement. Look at the box or look at something to make sure that you've got the wings facing the correct direction. You want the majority of the wing to be facing down like that. If you can see it, the majority of the wing will be facing towards the bottom of the craft. If it's, you know, I don't know, if, it's kind of hard to, what do you consider the bottom of the craft, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Face down towards the nose, I guess. Face towards the nose. The the majority of the wing wants to go towards the nose, I guess. Yeah. So that you can put him up like that. You know, when he's flying that way. And it released the canopy. Look at that. The the chair, the area where the guys sit is now released by plugging in the wings. And now it moves like a uh like a B-wing or something like that where it's driven by weights and it moves around driven by those weights interesting again you got to clip this in right in order to have it all line up correctly there we go pretty cool I like them you know the wings turned out pretty nice I like the way the cockpit moves around like that Really cool. The bombs. Put the bombs in back here. They fit pretty snug. They fit really well. You can kind of see them there now. Boom, 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 boom. Bombs. And not really releasing all that well <laughs> let's try the other one that one releases pretty good there you go yeah they just fit really snug in there so at least they're not going to fall out right you're not going to be walking around with this thing and have them fall out all the time so that's all right i'm okay with that you know because i don't like it when my missiles and bombs just kind of fall out <laughs> on their own accord so We'll put the missiles in the front here. Let's try this. I'm going to have to set it down here and chew. Oh, it hit my hand and bounced back in. Chew and boo. Yeah, there we go. So those work pretty good. 
And now the stand, we'll get this on the stand here. I've just got it sitting right there and you slide it down over the nose and between the nose and the back like and it fits very well. The stand works out really good here. Yeah, this isn't bad at all. I mean, it holds it real nicely, which I'm surprised. I'm, yeah, it's it looks great. All right, I'm going to get this thing up on the table now. We'll get off the floor, and get up onto the table, and get a good look at this thing. Here we go, the Slave 1, all put together with some vintage figures near it. And look at this paint job. Look at the way this is done. This is really nice. I like this ship a lot. I really, really do. I am incredibly impressed with the way this thing looks. Especially put up on this stand. I really like it. I do. I really like it. So you can see the way the three figures go in. It looks like they go in standing up. And there's clips to hold around their waist. And uh, the thing will pivot as we put it on the stand or lift the stand it up or whatever. So I've done and gone and put Boba Fett and two Stormtroopers in there. They were not that hard to get in. I did it off camera just because there's a little bit of finagling and all you're going to see is a hand. You know, no, no. <laughs> so, you know, I figured it didn't look good. You just saw the back of this big hand in the way for a minute or two as I put them in there. So we'll just cut to this. They don't look that bad in there. Boba Fett's a little bit forward because of his backpack, but otherwise it looks good. So here's the first spot to put Han Solo and Carbonite in the cargo hold. And it's right behind where the guys sit. Which I think for practical sense makes perfect sense. You know, you'd want the cargo... Your most precious cargo as close to you as can be. Now in the movie they had him going up this ramp which doesn't go anywhere. And it's not wide enough to put the carbonite guy in there. So what you could do is you could lower this nose cargo hatch. And the Han carbonite could just go up this ramp and then right up that ramp. And... If you put him all the way up in it, he it actually um, lines up perfectly. You can see the corners here. It's like it was made for this. You know what I mean? Look at that. It fits absolutely perfectly right in that little tray. So clearly this was designed with this in mind. Even though the instructions show you to put it behind the, the seats, this has an exact fit. So, I think that was where they've had... That, that's got to be an idea in their minds, and they just didn't show it in the instructions. Because it's absolutely the exact size of the carbonite block. You know, it fits perfectly in there. So, what do you do with this then? This is what was in the nose. I guess you could just open this side up and sort of set it in here, standing up. You know, so we'll um, we'll put that right in there, and <laughs> it lets make sure that if that's standing up in there, and we got this all clipped down, that the cockpit still rotates, and it does. So there you go. You could put the the like carbonite block in the nose, and then the the uh, suspension chamber, whatever you want to call it. The, I don't know, it's like a, yeah, it's kind of like one of those suspended animation chambers that, like, you'd use an alien or something. They look good in the cockpit there, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess there you go. You could just do, you know, you got options. You got options, that's all I'm saying, you know? Boy, that looks nice, doesn't it? Doesn't that look nice? Wow. Looks good. So this other, this, this, uh, you know, the chamber, the, um, sleeping chamber fits the three and three quarter inch figure pretty well. So we'll say he's a bounty and he's going in the, 
cold storage. <laughs> it fits all right, you know? And this also, again, like I said, this fits perfectly in the nose cone area if you want to do that. And it shuts and goes in there really nicely as well. So you really do have a lot of options as far as where you put all this cargo. It's totally up to you. You don't have to follow those instructions, you know? All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Look at that. We've kept it down under 30 minutes. Fantastic. Really cool. I hope I gave you guys enough to look at with this Slave 1. I, I mainly wanted to go through putting it together and showing you as it comes out of the box because I know there's already a couple of reviewers that just did a review and spotlight on the vehicle itself but didn't show you how to put it together. So I thought I'd do a little bit different. I don't like, I don't want to exactly copy what someone else did. So I thought I'd do something just a tiny bit different and show how you put this thing together. Plus give you a couple of options as far as uh, where to put that carbonite block that some people might not have thought of before. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. You're going to love this channel. All kinds of really cool things come in this toy room. And when I get them, I take a look at them. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.